The first IOF president, Eric Tobey, said that the most important thing of all is that one should feel at home, even when away. Today, we often take this for granted. We have common competition rules, international map standards, and pictorial control descriptions. But it hasn't always been like this. How did we get to where we are now? Let's watch the journey. The 1960s. The official language of the IOF was German. Control descriptions were therefore written in German. Different countries had different traditions in map making and there was no universal standard. At the European Championships in Switzerland in 1964, for example, all forest was drawn in green. It was clear from the beginning that one of the IOF's main tasks was to ensure that orienteers could feel at home even when away, that the maps were drawn in the same way everywhere and that everyone could understand the control descriptions. Nineteen sixty six. The European Championships were renamed the World Championships, even though all the competitors were still from Europe. At the World Championships there were only two distances individual classic distance and relay. Ulla Linkvist totally dominated the women's class and won the classic distance by more than eight minutes. Orga Hadler won the men's class. 1968, the World Championships in Sweden. All IOF members were still from Europe. The runners' clothing was a bit different in those days. Ulla Linkvist and Carl Johansson won the classic distance on home ground. Crown Prince Carl Gustaf of Sweden presented the medals to the winners. The first non-European members joined in 1969. They were Canada and Japan. In 1969, the IOF's work on creating a universal language for orienteers gave results. The first international specification for orienteering maps was published. Since then, all maps used in IOF events have been drawn in the same way, regardless of where in the world the event is organised. In 1971, the IOF became bilingual, with the introduction of English as the second official language. Nineteen seventy five. The first World Ski Orienteering Championships were organised in Finland. The event director was Lasse Heidemann, who had also been event director for the first World Orienteering Championships in nineteen sixty six. He later became IOF president. Here you can see six countries in the men's relay. Kiihtosuunnistuksessa ei varaslähtöjä tapahdu, sillä vasta lähtölaukauksen jälkeen saavat kilpailijat, mutta vain 25 sekuntia myöhemmin riipaisi rastin tunnusvärin kilpailukorttiinsa Suomen Raili Sar Sallinen. Ja kartan tutkistelun jälkeen totesivat tytöt päätyneensä samansuuntaiseen reitin valintaan. Sonia Vasiliva, Bulgaria. Where there's not much snow, you can always carry your skis instead. Pat Murphy, Great Britain, just behind her, did try to ski. In 1975, the first pictorial control descriptions were introduced and, maybe for the first time, orienteering became a truly fair sport worldwide. Here we see the start of the women's relay at the World Orienteering Championships in 1979. A rather heavy-duty starting pistol in use here. Lisa Violainen on her way to victory for Finland. The 1980s was a decade of globalization. The first World Championships outside Europe were held in 1985 in Australia. Carrie Salonen won the men's class ahead of Tora Sagvolden and Eagle Everson. 1985 was a record year for the traditional Swedish multi-day event O-Ringen, with over 25,000 taking part in Fallon. O-Ringen has been held since 1965. In 1985, 
the IOF and the Swedish Orienteering Federation agreed on a levy on O-Ringen, one Swedish kroner per participant. This gave the IOF substantial economic help and assistance in establishing a permanent IOF secretariat. The 1980s, orienteering spread to many new countries. The IOF had 10 members at the start in 1961. By 1988, there were 34. 1986, there was TV transmission from the World Cup in the Czech Republic that year. The results processing and timing still used traditional pen and paper and early days technology. Za páté místo obdržela 21 bodů. Výsledková listina se pomalu plnila jak na počítači, tak i na přírodní tabuli, kde ji mohli zhlédnout závodníci i diváci. The World Championships were held in France for the first time in 1987. Okay. The 12th World Championship in Orienteering is also. Could you tell us who could be winner tomorrow? I hope I should be it, but uh, we have to see tomorrow. I think uh, the Nordic runners will uh, be in the lead, but uh, I hope that some Central European runners will be among the four or five best. And I think there is a possibility that there will be at least uh, a Swiss. The 1988 Ski Orienteering World Championships in Finland. Competition was now much fiercer and clothing was modern style too. There was still a lot to be improved. In 1989 there was an attempt to show the runner's route on the map, but as there was no GPS tracking then, there must have been a lot of guesswork. In 1989, the relays still had four legs and often got very strung out. Here, Horvod Tweiter, now chairman of IOF's map commission, celebrates Norway's relay win. The International Orienteering Federation is very happy to enjoy the hospitality of the Swedish Ski Federation the city of Sheleftio and the organizing committee during this week of exciting events. I hereby declare the eight world championships in ski orienteering open. The 1990s saw a lot of innovations. 1991 was the year when a second individual format, short distance, was introduced at the world championships. In 1992, a third official discipline, trail orienteering, was recognised by the IOF. 1992 was also the year that English became the only official language of the IOF. 1993, the World Championships were again held outside Europe, this time in the United States at West Point. Some well-known Swedes were to the fore in the men's short distance, but Norway's Petter Torresen was the winner. In the women's class, Anna Bogreen from Sweden was the fastest. Far på banan finns Jörgen Mortensson. Mortensson började försiktigt, men avslutar loppet mycket starkt. Kent Olsson blir fyra. The IOF experimented with new course formats in the World Cup. Here, a course model for a mass start. In 1994, pin punches were still in use, but electronic punching had been introduced. The top runners began to give detailed descriptions of their routes for the press. Och när jag kom till den skrenten där så trodde jag att jag var uppe i de skrentan här. Därför drog jag ner en tur. Men då fann jag ingen post och såg att det här var det väldigt usikker då. After the rapid growth of mountain bike orienteering in Central Europe in the early 1990s, 
The 1996 IOF Congress in Jerusalem made it IOF's fourth official discipline. The first decade of the new century, the focus on visibility, orienteering no longer just hidden in the forest. The feature of a jam-packed orienteering carnival that included the Australian Three Days, an event attracting 850 competitors, the World Cups drew a field of 120 orienteers from 17 nations around the world. Probably keeping up with the kangaroos. <laughs> no, um probably the, the terrain, it's a very different kind of forest from what we're used to in, in Europe, but uh, from what we've seen the maps are very good and the terrain's nice, so I think we'll cope with most of the challenges. The sprint distance format was introduced in 2001. Tracking as we know it today was used for the first time at the 2001 World Championships in Finland. The tracking devices sent the position data to the tracking computer by mobile phone text message. Se on todennäköisesti hitaa. Ratamestarit arvioivat, että noin 15-20 sekuntia hitaampi. Middle distance was introduced in 2003, replacing the short distance format. Orientierungslauf auf Weltklasse Niveau. Das ist blitzschnelles, fast intuitives Erfassen der Karte und der Problemstellung der Wahl der schnellsten Route zum nächsten Kontrollposten. Die getroffene Entscheidung wird konsequent umgesetzt und laufend kontrolliert. Orienteering was launched at the World Games. The Games have given Orienteering a new level of visibility on the world sporting stage. A big step forward in our Olympic ambitions. Athletes of the world. I am glad and proud to bring you the warmest greetings of your brothers and sisters of the Olympic movement. Ski orienteering has developed from a specialist sport for the few to a worldwide sport using the newest TV and tracking technology. In recent years, this discipline has become included in several multi-sports games and the IOF is working hard for Skio to be included in the Winter Olympic Games. Mountain bike orienteering is the fastest growing IOF discipline at the moment. Tracking will be used for the first time at the World Championships in Italy this year. Trail orienteering has classes for both disabled and able-bodied athletes. World Championships in Trail Orienteering have been held since 2004. A sprint form of Trail Orienteering, called Tempo, is the latest innovation. Foot Orienteering has come a long way from its start in the forests of Norway to, for example, parkland in Chinese Taipei. The tracking of the World Games Mixed Relay, shown here, is an excellent illustration that Orienteering can be done anywhere. As a visiting IWGA official commented, after seeing the mixed relay and the tracking used, you have made the invisible visible. So where are we today? We have grown from 10 federations to 73, from one continent to five, and we've come from deep in the forest out into the public eye. We have come a long way since 1961. We still have a long way to go in our aim to achieve the best for the sport. As we continue our journey, we will always bear in mind where it all started from, the need to have fair conditions for all orienteers. The IOF's main task remains today to make sure that orienteers feel at home, even when away. <laughs> <laughs>